Hello everybody, this is General Hand Grenade. No, I'm just kidding, it's Winter Mute. So, today, I wanted to talk about some of the stuff that I did, uh, or do, for glo uh, Global War, um, because I don't have, I didn't have the money to invest right away in, in all the different sculpts and pieces and, and uh, uh, tokens and things like that. Um, so some of this is going to be phased out once I, uh, once I have the opportunity to, to get some more of the, the figurines that are coming out and, uh, kind of, and I'm just sort of waiting to do all that at once. Um, but I wanted to show you kind of what I did, uh, to kind of make do, uh, in, in the interim. So one thing I didn't have is I didn't have sculpts for like torpedo boat destroyers and light armor and light carriers and coastal subs and, uh, stuff like that because it didn't come because I, I really didn't have the equivalent in uh, the base Axis and Allies Global, which obviously we were get the bulk of these figurines from initially. So what I did is I took all these black chits that I had bought and I used a digital ed editing program called GIMP, which is free. Uh, anybody can go download it and it, it's a great program. Uh, has a little bit of a learning curve, but it's it's not too difficult. And what I did is I went ahead and you can see I just made a sheet that said uh, of these little, oops, excuse me, uh, little black circles that said light armor. So what that allowed me to do is when I was setting up, I would just take this, set it down, and if I needed uh, a nation that had light armor that I didn't have a sculpt for it, I would just... Uh, uh, do that so that I, I knew that was light armor. I had to do the same thing for medium bombers, motorized infantry, coastal subs, um, light carriers, and torpedo boat destroyers. Because, like I said, those those figurines just don't inherently, you know, uh, you, you, have to, you have to buy them through uh, historical board gaming. Um, and initially, I just didn't have the extra funds to be able to do that. Now, I've got some of these now. I'm not 100%. Um, but... Uh, when the time comes and I phase all these out, I just used Elmer's glue to paste these on. So I can basically just get them wet, wipe off all the glue, pull or pull the sticker off or pull the paper off, wipe off all the glue, and I've got all my black chits back for whatever else I want to use them for. So that's not even a, a, a permanent, it's not like I'm going to have to throw these away. I, th these will see a second life. Uh, but in the meantime, that's what they're doing. This, is they're, they're a placeholder, relatively cheap to make. Um, just a little bit of uh, effort to, to make them uh, on the using using some some editing software. So that's one option that I used in that case, and I basically did the exact same thing with some national roundels um, because I needed to mark what units belong to what nation at various times. So for any nation that had a navy. Uh, you know, out in the ocean, I needed to distinguish it from other, uh, another Navy that was in the same territory. I would just put these chips underneath that Navy and it would tell me, well, these are the Dutch units and these are the Siam units and, uh, uh, these are the, uh, Swedish units and so on and so, so forth. But it's basically the exact same thing. I just went online, found round little pictures, uh, shrunk them down to the size I needed, cut them out. They're not even laminated, uh, cut them out and glued them straight to the, the, uh, chip. So that, uh, that made that a lot simpler for me. Uh, another thing I did is I have some of these really nice roundels from historical board gaming. Uh, and these look really great on the board. They really stand out. They're, they're just beautiful pieces. But I didn't want to use up these on my tech chart or anything else I needed to keep track of, like the IPP chart and, and whatever else. So I used the old cardboard ones to track on my uh, tech chart. Uh, yeah, they these look nicer, but you know, you're not, at the, on the tech chart, you don't need them to look as nice, or you don't want them to, or you don't care if they look as nice as if they do on the board. So I just used all the old cardboard ones, put a magnet on the back, and that way I'm not using the good ones uh, to just be placeholders on the on that chart. So that saved me from having to buy an extra round of these. Um, when it came to militia, I didn't have a ton of these militia chips. So what I did is I went to a local hobby store. I bought some 172nd 
uh, scale figurines. I think these are from the Korean War, but you really can't tell, you know, by initially looking at them. And I just painted them all yellow. And uh, I think in version two, no militia could move with the exception of Russia. Um, and, and that was only when they were at war and in their home country. Now all militia can move within their home country. But I didn't need to color code it to the country itself because it can't go outside of those countries' home borders. So all my militia are just yellow. I just made them all yellow. And then um, this I just recently did. I took these militia chips because you can see their base isn't uh, uniformly round. So some of them had trouble staying up. So I went ahead and with the problematic ones, I just glued this militia chip on the bottom. And uh, it helps them stay upright. And uh, they actually do look better too. Um, but now I need to buy some more militia chips for these. Uh, to You know, just to finish out what I've got. Because uh, version 3 has a lot of militia when you start the game. Um, so these weren't that expensive. And obviously the yellow paint wasn't that expensive. And I didn't need to initially to buy a whole 30, 40 more militia tokens than what I initially bought with the, with the kind of package deal. Because um, all the militia were yellow. You just knew it. You just reached into the general pool of militia, pulled them out, put them in your country. And if, so long as it was within your borders, you knew it was yours. There was no confusion there. So that kept the price down for me there. And in that same note, um, I didn't mount um, the nation-specific infantry uh, figurines onto the mountain, marine, and cavalry tokens uh, so that I just have a general pool. Now, I think they look nice when they're mounted. They're a little bit easier to handle, um, but I'm going to need to order more of these. If you don't have all the extra funds to, to mount them all or to, to buy an extra 20 or 30 of each one of these to start off with, just don't mount them. Just keep them in a pool off to the side of the table, and as you need them, you just take them off and use them for whatever nation buys it. Um, though I do want to eventually have, you know, four or five for each nation that I know uses these. Obviously, some nations don't really use Marines or Mountain very, or Cavalry very often, so I won't worry about them. Um, but I'm also going to keep some of these tokens unmounted so that uh, we just, if somebody does something unusual and they do buy Mountain or Marines or Cavalry or, I don't know, China becomes a major power and suddenly they need a bunch of them for some reason. Um, we'll at least have some off to the side. Um, but again, that, that saved me from having to invest in another 20 or 30 of each of these, depending on how your game plays out. And I also, this is a, this is actually a Japanese roundel. I forget what it specifically said it was for, but I use this as just a, a marker for elite units. Um, in V2, Finland started with some elite infantry, so I just used this token, put it underneath the uh, figurine, and I knew that those were elite infantry. Um, they, I think they're, they're handling elite infantry a little bit different in, in V3, uh, and they're deferring more towards like the elite of the Soviet Union and the elite of the Third Reich and those expansions to cover those rather than putting them in the core units. Though some expansions, like the Spanish Civil War, you can still, you know, walk away with like an elite unit out of that war based on the uh, the randomness chart or the random event chart. So that's, I'm still going to use this for that purpose. It's going to be an elite marker uh, unless I come across something uh, uh, different or better down the line. Uh, I also went ahead and I did my... Uh, Air, my uh, aircraft stands kind of on the cheap. Um, they may not look quite as good as the ones you can buy, but I promise you these are way more inexpensive. Um, basically, all they are is a roofing nail, and I use the one and one fourth inch roofing nail. Uh, I go down to the local hardware store. I bought a whole box of them. I bought a whole box of washers, and you want to make sure the washers, because initially I just used the nail, but then I realized that it, it the head of the nail wasn't stable enough, so I wanted to go ahead and um, uh, give it a little more stability, so I went ahead and I bought uh, some washers that were bigger than the, the head of the nail, and then I just, after I painted them, I just glued them together, and it made them much more stable. It also had the added benefit of when I Obviously, I magnetized the top of my carriers. Um, it had the added benefit of when I put these guys on there and then I, I move them like this, if I want to pull a plane off, 
it weakened the the magnetic bond a little bit because if I went like this, I would have I would pull up the carrier all the time. So these are uh, aluminum, so they're not as magnetically strong, uh, or, or they're obviously they have no magnetics if they're aluminum, but uh, they weakened this magnetic pull on my magnet there, so I can just pull off the actual plane itself without pulling up the entire carrier. Like you saw here, I would constantly be knocking it over or pulling it up initially. So, but all I did was I took the nail, I tapped down the tip just a little bit um, to give it a little more surface area. Uh, once I drilled the hole into the bottom of the aircraft, um, I uh, painted it, painted the washers with just a can of uh, glossy black. Uh, glued them together, again using Elmer's glue, meaning they will fall apart on occasion, but it's easy to fix. And uh, then I just mounted the plane using the real thick, uh, I found that real thick super glue works best, um, rather than the thin stuff. Uh, so that is, that. those are my air stands on the cheap. Um, I'd say less than 20 bucks, and I've got... This is, this is my second box, and each box has um, like almost 200 nails in it. And same thing with the washers. You can buy those washers at a, by the box for, for real, just a couple bucks. Um, so that saved me quite a bit of money in the long run. And, uh, and I like them. I think that they're, I'm not going to swap out at this point for the more expensive store-bought ones or ones you can buy online because I'm pretty happy with these. I think they look good, and I think they work. Um... And you can also see that uh, I magnetized, I put a magnet strip on the top of my carriers. Uh, what I did was, this is the, the block of wood that I work on, or used to work that. And I, basically I would, I would cut off a strip that basically was the length of this uh, carrier. I would um, kind of, I wouldn't even glue it on to start with. I would just put it underneath it. And then I would, uh, I got a hole right here for the, uh, I'm not sure what the command deck, I guess is what you'd call that. <clears throat> and so that way it lays flat. And then I just use an X-Acto knife to go around the edges of the carrier itself. I'd pull it off, pull this, uh, uh, I'd open the sticky part, glue it on. I always had to use extra super glue, and I always had to put them down like this on the edge of a book and then stack books on top of them and then leave them there for several days because when you get that tape, it's automatically rolled up. It wants to constantly roll up. But to get it to lay flat, you got to kind of train it to be flat, and you got to use extra super glue uh, to do that because the the stickiness on the back of the tape itself, the magnetic tape, isn't going to cut it. And then once I'd done that, I just uh, this is another nail. It's a different type than the roofing nail. I, I didn't want a big uh, big head on it, um, and I just drilled a hole straight in. Used some super glue. I printed out these flags. Uh, just glued them right into place, and then. That gives me a nice handle to move my uh, my carrier, and it gives me the ability to keep my planes on the carrier as I move it. I think it looks good too. It really makes uh, makes the carrier stand out on the board. That's not so much. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously the stands are cheap, but this is something I did just because I really really liked it. I really like the idea of having the the planes be magnetized onto the the carriers. And, and at the same time have something to be able to grab the carrier by. Uh, one thing, one another upgrade that I got was poker chips. Um, God, these make the game so much easier to play and smoother to play. You can just look at what somebody has and count it in your head right away. You don't even ask, have to ask them how much money they have. Um, I use these as 1s, 3s, 5s, 10s, 25s. And really, uh, a nice set of poker chips is is surprisingly inexpensive. Um, you'll you'll even end up with extra space in the poker case, most the poker chip case, to maybe hold dice or some other tokens that you might want to use for the game. So again, that's not so much as keeping it cheap. That's more of just a a really nice upgrade to the game that makes it. You know, I went I played uh, Axis Allies and Zombies a few weeks ago, and we used paper money. And me and the other player were both like, you know what? We should just break out the poker chips. I'll run home and get them because this paper money is is frustrating now that I have to play it, uh, play with it again now that I've used poker chips. So I would recommend when you've got the extra money, buy yourself a nice set of poker chips or even just a decent set. These don't need to be anything special. 
Um, one thing I also did uh, to keep things a little uh, cheap in the, initially was uh, these I used as fortifications. Uh, this is basically just a little wooden head thing. I don't even know what it's used for. I just came across a bag of them, two different types at the hardware store, painted them gray so they look like the other facilities, and I used the bigger ones for like the Maginot line and um, was it the Mannerheim line, uh, the really well-known fortifications, and then anything else, anybody, all the smaller ones that start the game or anything anybody builds throughout the game, I just use these smaller ones. And there, you, you know it's a fortification. They're real, real simple. It kind of looks like a pillbox or a, a, something like that. Um, real cheap to buy. Um, and, you know, for, for now, they're, they're doing just fine until I can find something uh, that I think looks better and, and have the, the money to invest in it. These are movement remaining tokens for the... Sorry, I, I don't... I'm not very well centered here, am I? These are movement remaining tokens that I made. Um, I actually, I've seen them online. The only ones I found online were the were kind of yellow and black. And I, I just don't care for the way they look. Um, I, I did just something about yellow. And, and I, I like to keep things very color specific. So my militia are yellow. I don't want anything else on the board to be yellow if I can help it. Um, so these, this is a, this little wooden disc I got at Hobby Lobby. A bag of, I want to say, 30 of them um, for just a couple bucks. And then I went online. Somebody had made these tokens that you can just download and print off. So I just downloaded them, printed them off, laminated them, painted the chip black, and then I just used Elmer's glue to put the number on either side for the movement remaining tokens. And, and they run all the way from one to six. And I think these look look really nice. And I like that they're they're bigger than your standard tokens, so they stand out a little bit more. And they're a, they're a little bit easier to read because you can kind of put that there and still go, okay, that's a six. I don't need to constantly be fiddling with my with my uh, chips or my planes. You know, you can kind of see the number a little bit off to the side, or in the case of the one, not at all. So you know, it's a one. Um, but again, this was done on the cheap. Uh, and I think these, I'm pretty happy with these so far. I, I think they look good. Obviously, they look DIY, but uh, a little homemade. But uh, again, if you if you really want these, and I, I think they're a very useful thing to have when you're playing, um, that's probably a cheaper way to do it. Or, or just buy the wooden discs, download those uh, images, uh, print them off, laminate them, and glue them to the, the chips themselves. Uh, one upgrade that I did is... I really like these, and I use these. Uh, I put these in the territory where I have combats at the end of my combat movement phase, and that way, it I I when I after I'm done rolling a couple combats, you know, we've all done it. We've all been like, uh, we've all moved on to our you know, we, okay, your turn, and then halfway through their turn, we're going, oh, we forgot to roll that combat out there in the ocean, or well, we forgot to roll that combat there in Yugoslavia. I put I like these because I can I can just do a quick glance across the board and if any of these are out there I still have a combat to roll. So again these aren't cheap per se but uh, you can make these you can, you can find tutorials on how to make something equivalent to this. I know uh, Warhammer 40k players will use uh, things like this made out of cotton to represent damage to the vehicles. You could do something like that uh, and just use a penny for the base, get some cotton. Uh, some spray paint and make yourself a nice uh, a smoking smoking uh, uh, pillar of, of smoke. Uh, and again, use those as markers for wherever you've got combat so that you don't forget that you need to roll a combat there. And these are my um, army markers. Um, again, I downloaded these pictures uh, and they come with these these flags here. And I cannot for the life of me remember where I downloaded these from uh, at all. Um, but all I did was I, I had uh, wooden blocks or planks in my garage. So I just used a miter saw to cut them down to the right length. I painted them the color for their respective nation, laminated this, glued it to the top. And then all I did with these is I just laminated them. I didn't need a special stand or anything like that. I just laminated them and I just cut, a, cut and I used the actual lamination as the stand. 
Uh, and then all that is at the bottom is just Legos. Uh, they work fine. Uh, and they don't look silly. Uh, I mean, you know, you can tell they're Legos, but they, they don't look as silly as, as at first I thought they would. And I thought I'd have to find something else. Uh, and I've got plenty of Legos to use. So um, I just use those slope tops and then just uh, one four, uh, two by two on the bottom there. And then there's the equivalent marker. Uh, the nice thing is with these is they have, they're not as big as some of the other ones I've seen. So they don't hold a ton of units, but they've got, they're, they're thicker. So I can easily pick them up and, and move the, uh, even with all the figurines on it, move them around without too much difficulty of drop, uh, too much, too much difficulty and without much worry about uh, them falling off or being dropped. Um, so again, this is, I downloaded this stuff for free. Uh, this is material I had. This is material I had. All you really need is the laminate, spray paint, um, and you've got yourself some nice, uh, nice army markers for the, for the game. Now, I will say, I haven't been using these since I got the biggest map possible. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the big one. Um, so now I've got, which is why I bought the big one is because, uh, I, I don't mind using these, but I just, I like having more space for my units. So, but I haven't been using these quite as much. And then in the interim, until I can get, uh, the new ship figurines, um, like the, uh, the light cruiser, heavy cruiser, uh, battle cruiser, and I can't think of the, uh, oh, and the, then there's fast battleships and things like that too. Um, I've just been using these like sticky note things. These are, these are what you would put on like the edge of paper to in like a book or something, a, a textbook to mark a certain page. And so I'm just using these pink ones to represent a light cruiser. And I'm using the regular cruiser as the heavy cruiser. Uh, and this is just to just until we can get the figurines out and I can get them ordered and, and shipped here. Um, I'm just kind of waiting to put in my order uh, because I know that there's going to be a, a wave of figurines coming out for the light and the at battle cruisers. Oh, and the coastal defense ships and like that. So for right now, I just wanted something real quick, real easy. Uh, I just lay, I just color coded them. So the battle cruisers are red. The uh, light cruisers are pink. The coastal defense ships are green. And I, I, what did I mean with, uh, green is the, uh, oh, I can't remember right now, but, uh, but, and this is, like I said, this is just for me to kind of play around with the game before I get those figurines. But in the meantime, if you, if you don't have the money to order all those figurines, you know, think of something like this, just a simple way. It's not permanent or anything like that. You just pull it off and it, it's just like, a kind of just like a sticky note, um, you know, now you could always color code the ships, paint something on them to, to differentiate them. But I, I want to get eventually get the sculpts. So I figured I this would be a nice way, simple, easiest way of just kind of, you know, filling the gap for right now. And then the last thing I wanted to kind of show is now these aren't for Global War 1936. These are for my uh, Global 40. Uh, really in any other kind of access and allies game that you, you would play the, I made these myself. Um, all I did was buy a bunch of bags. Uh, cause each, each one of these, there's like 16 of each of blank dice, completely blank dice without anything on them. Uh, you can buy them. Chessex, I think has them. And what I did is I just took a, uh, uh, drill and I just, Built, uh, drilled out a shallow hole right there. Um, and then I painted it the color I wanted. And then I just used a black paint pen to just color in the hole, let it dry. And now this is a hit on one chip or dice, excuse me. Uh, it only has one pip on one side. So you roll it. If the pip's not there, you missed. Real simple, real easy. This is two pips on it. Um, I put them next to each other. It doesn't really matter where you put them on the dice because it's, it's all random. And then this is my threes. And then this is my fours. And nothing hits on a five uh, in Action Allies glo or, yeah, Global. So basically all you have to do is you pick up, you got three infantry, no artillery. You pick up your, your three of the blue dice. Um, you, you got one bomber. You pick up the four. You got one tank. And then you got something else that attacks it too. And then there's, there's your entire dice pool. You roll it and you just count up the pips. You don't even have to look for numbers. You just count up the pips. And 
uh, it, it actually, you know, I didn't think it would be a, as big a help as it turned out to be when we played the game, once we started using these all the time. And everybody said, oh, yeah, man, it's way easier. Just count the pips. Just If the pip's not there, you don't even look at that dice. You just grab it, move it off to the side, and count the pips. Um, so a lot of players really like that. And I just wanted to kind of point out how, how easy it was to make these. Uh, and uh, one player did ask, well, does, does drilling these holes in it imbalance the dice? And my answer was, if it does, I wouldn't even know. And if you don't know, it's still random. So, uh, you know, and I know that's not how loaded dice work. You don't, you know, putting out a little bit on each side isn't going to do anything to it. You need to wait a corner. That's how loaded dice are loaded. Uh, so so the, really, this shouldn't affect the randomality of the dice at all. Um, so uh, this is just something I wanted to add for, for any uh, global players. Uh, I thought about doing the same thing with Global War uh, with 12-sided dice because you can get blank 12-sided dice. The only problem is, is with target selection and things like that that trigger on a certain number on the dice, uh, it's not as useful because um, you have to be able to know what the number is. Now, there's probably some way of doing that, uh, you know, where I could take a 12-sided die, the 7s, and then do a, uh, you know, paint three of the pips red and leave, uh, leave the other four pips to equal seven, just black. And if a red comes up, you know you got target selection. But right now, I don't know. I'm still debating that. I, I, I don't know whether that's worth it. And uh, there are some things that have different levels of target selection. So I just, I, I don't know. I, I think it's, right now it's more trouble than it's worth, but it's something I'll look into later. So, uh... That's what I wanted to share today. I wanted to share the some of the upgrades and some of the things that I did kind of to make the game work on the uh, being frugal uh, while I was waiting to get into a place where I could afford to buy more of the expansions and more of the figurines and that, that'll fill in the roles. Um, if anybody else has any other suggestions about what they did to kind of fill in and mark units and, and maybe use a way of uh, making do with what they had until a figure, special figurine came out, uh, please feel free to leave that in the comments so we can share it with other players and, and you know, uh, pass it around to people who may just be getting into this game but, uh, you know, don't have the, the financial resources to just buy everything they want right away. You know, you start off with the map, you start off with your, your Axis and Allies figurines, which most people are already going to have, and then you buy a couple essentials to, to just be able to work. And then, like I said, I, I did things like, uh, like this to just fill in the gap uh, until I could afford to actually get those sculpts. So I want people to have options uh, to be able to play in the meantime with just a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of financial or a little bit of financial investment um, to be able to, to make the game work in the meantime before... Uh, you know, they're able to get everything for it. So again, share your ideas uh, or anything you see that maybe I, I you know, didn't, uh, maybe could have, uh, you see a way of making it even one step better. Feel free to share that in the comments below. And this is Wintermute. Have a great day.